Welcome back to Diva Doll Flawless. In today's video, I'm going to share with you all how I have my Cricut cut out these images from my monthly digital um, subscription that I pay for. This is from the Shabby Art Boutique. It's the Granny's Pantry collection and I love her monthly subscription. It's all shabby chic items. Every month is a different theme and you truly get a lot of bang for your buck. But the best part about it is, is that it's full of digital images and papers, which are some of my favorite crafting mediums to work with. Now, in order to have my Cricut cut it out, I'm just going to have a new project started and then I'm going to click upload. I am working on my iPad for this particular project. You can do this on your laptop or your cell phone, it's up to you. I'm going to click browse and then start working on the images. So I'm just going to choose one of these mini gorgeous images that are included in this month's, this month's subscription kit. <laughs> And oh my goodness, you guys, they, I just love digital images. I, I really, really do. And having a digital cutting machine, just, oh, it's the best. So this is a PNG image. You can tell because it has a checkered background, which means the background is translucent. So that little preview that you see is all that Cricut is going to cut out. It will give me an option to send this to my home printer to print it out and then have the machine cut it out. There is nothing for us to remove or erase or crop. So therefore, all I need to do is click next. There's nothing for us to smooth out or fix. So again, click next. And now what you're gonna do is choose how you want to work with this image. You have Cricut just cut the outline of this or you can save it as a print then cut, which is what I'm going to do. So please make sure that you double check and you click on the correct image um, or the correct save image version that you want to work with. And then you wanna name this image. Now what I typically do is I'll just put Shabby Art Boutique Granny's Pantry for every single image. If you are doing this on your laptop, you do get the option of adding tags. I just do the Shabby Art Boutique Granny's Pantry. That way, whenever I wanna work with these images again, it's gonna pull up all of all, all of everything from that particular kit that I included into or uploaded into Design Space. So all of these images that you see here, I had to do the process for every single one. I find the fastest way to do this is to turn something on like a movie or a show and then just use your iPad if you are one of those who have an iPad. If you have an iPad, this goes by so quickly. So here's all of the images and I'm now going to choose what I want and then I'm going to click insert. And this is going to pull everything up on the canvas. Once it's up on the canvas, I mean, the options are endless. You can really do whatever it is that you want. I've created jumbo tags out of these types of things. I've created shaped photo albums. So if you want it to be a jello shaped photo album, you can just have Cricut send this to your printer, print it out, and then cut it. And now this jello box is super sized for you to do whatever you want. Um, you can take these images, print them out and cut them and have them framed. It's really up to you. But I like to just use them as they're basically their intended purpose, which is ephemera. I have two sizes I work with. Most of the times I size everything to a width of 2.0. If the ephemera piece is pretty big, then I might, I'm at 2.5 is the original size that I typically use. 2.0 would be like the secondary size that depending on how big the ephemera piece is, I'll go to. So 2.5 and 2.0 is pretty much where I stick to. But if I'm doing something miniature, like I'm currently working on a dollhouse with my daughters and we want miniature sizes, we would, I would size this down to 1.5, okay? Now, another thing that I'm going to show you is you can start making your own collage out of these different images. So if there are some that you want to group together, then you can do that right here in design space. If you have a silhouette, you actually can do the same thing. Um, you want to click arrange so that these items can be moved backwards. If you want it all the way in the back, if you want the jello all the way in the back, send to back. If you want it just slightly in front of the 
kitchen scale, then now that it's all the way in the back, all you have to do is move forward. Once you're happy with the way that all of this is set up, just go ahead, select all of those images and click flatten. This is going to tell Cricut that I want to print this image on my printer and then I just want you to cut it as one whole image. It's not going to cut the images individually so it is very important that you click flatten not group and not attach it must be flattened okay so again i'm just messing around with the range to see what i like and once i'm happy with it i'm just going to again click flatten if you don't like it just click unflatten and just mess around with it so as i was saying if you have a silhouette machine you actually could do this and you could add a little outline outside of all of these images as well and then you can save it from the silhouette designer software and then you can still upload it to Cricut. I've already done a video on showing how to use the silhouette software to do certain things that Cricut can't do so I do have that in this uh, Cricut playlist. Now you wanna save your project. I'm going to save it to the cloud. If I were to save it just to my iPad, then the only way I would be able to work with this particular project is from my iPad. If I save it to the cloud, that means it's in my Cricut account and I can use it on any of my devices. I, a lot of times once the project is completed, I'll just use my cell phone to send it to my printer, my home printer, and then I'll take it right to Cricut and use my cell phone to have Cricut cut it. It really just depends on what you have and how you use it, but it is very beneficial having that Bluetooth option so that you can use your iPad, computer, laptop, or cell phone. Now I'm gonna show you all how to make a quick card front with these digital images. So I click shape, and then I just change the color of the shape. You do have to hit arrange and put send to back because if not then the images will not be on top of the square and then i'm pretty much just going to do what you saw me do just take these images and arrange them the way that i would want them to be on this now i do like that blue background i thought that was very retro but i opted for the green and i want this to look more like a slimline type of card so i changed the width to eight point three excuse me the width is 3.5 and then the height is 8.5 but technically if you were doing a layering piece for a slimline card you would have done 3.25 and 8.25 so it's really up to you on what it is that you want to do again once you have your project size just make sure you change everything and it's just a couple of clicks to change something it really does not take a lot I like how this looks, so what I'm going to do is actually add a sentiment to this. So you would go and click on text, and then you can type it. And I'll do that once I'm <laughs> done messing around with these images. And again, you can just choose to resize them by typing the numbers in, or you can just press the plus or minus sign to resize. It's really not difficult. Once you've gotten there and played around with design space, you pretty much will learn this by trial and error. That's the best route that I can, <laughs> that's the best route I can tell you guys is to just, it's going to take trial and error. I know a lot of people get frustrated with the digital cutting machines, but once you learn how to think like the machine and you learn the software, it'll be a lot easier. And I'm gonna be honest, Cricut design software is so much easier than Silhouette. Uh, once we're happy with everything, we're just going to again, select all and click flatten. And now I'm just going to go ahead and choose whichever font it is that I want to work with. Now, when I type this hello friend, initially Cricut is going to cut out every last letter for hello friend. I don't want it to do that, so I'm going to show you all how to change that. Now that it's typed out, you'll see all those different lines popping up. That's just Cricut automatically showing you how everything is lined up, and it is very helpful. And then I'm going to just resize my sentiment, and I'm going to change the color of it, but then I also need to change the line type which is currently going to cut it out and that's not what we want. So I'm gonna change this to white 
And then there's at the bottom, it's going to say no fill. That's what you're going to click on. And you're going to click on the drop down and go to print. So now Cricut knows that I want hello friend to be printed, but in order for it to be printed on the project, I need to yet again, <laughs> and I know I've repeated this a million times, select all and click flatten. If you're happy with how it looks, you can go ahead and click save, make sure you save often, especially when you're doing changes. Um, make sure you click save and then you can click make it. Now, if you wanted this to be a tag and you didn't want to create it, all you have to do is do a image search in design space and pull up one of their tag outlines that they have. They do have a lot of things, but it's up to you on what you want to do. Now, as you can see here, we have our different our different pages. If you want to just print out more than one of the same page so that you can have multiples of this project, you can definitely do that. They have the bleed for print then cut. I always turn that off. I do not keep that on. And that's personal preference because sometimes I find that the bleed will have more of a coloring around my image that I do not want. And I really want it to be that precise image that I had created in design space. So I always turn the bleed off and that's pretty much it. So I hope you all learned something new. I hope that it just gives you a endless <laughs> idea of the things that you can do. There's so much you can do with digital images and I love them. So thank you all so much for watching. Please be sure to comment, like, and subscribe, and I will see you all in the next video. Have a gorgeous day, doll smooches. Bye.